Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today with a heavy heart to honor the memories of the 11 victims of the Pittsburgh synagogue shooting, an attack on three Jewish congregations during Shabbat service on the morning of October 27, 2018. Back in Pittsburgh, the trial for the deadliest anti-Semitic attack in our nation's history is proceeding. The jury convicted the gunmen on all 63 counts. Though this is a step towards justice, this trial reopened unimaginably painful wounds that have barely begun to heal. Congregation Dor Hadash, New Light Congregation, and the Tree of Life Congregation all had members taken from them. Their names were Joyce Feinberg, Richard Gottfried, Rose Malinger, Jerry Rabinowitz, Cecil Rosenthal, David Rosenthal, Bernice Simon, Sylvan Simon, Daniel Stein, Melvin Wax, and Irvin Younger. They were fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, friends, and colleagues. They were members of a vibrant community who sought solace, peace, and unity within the walls of their synagogues. May their memories be forever a blessing. And may the strength and resilience shown by the survivors, the victims, family members, and the entire Jewish community throughout this heartbreaking trial forever be an inspiration to us all. They inspire me to work even harder to confront the root causes of hatred, racism, and bigotry so that no community has to live in fear of such senseless gun violence ever again. And they were murdered by a white supremacist gunman who targeted them because of their faith and because their faith called them to welcome immigrants and refugees. The shooter was motivated by the great replacement theory. This was the same white supremacist theory that motivated the shooter in Buffalo to take the lives of 10 community members, the shooter in El Paso to take the lives of 23 Hispanic community members, and the shooter in Christ Church to take the lives of 51 Muslim worshipers. The best prediction of violence against, uh, against our communities is violent language. That holds in each of the four mass shooting examples I just mentioned. We must uphold the right of free speech while also working to stem the proliferation of violent rhetoric. When I visited the synagogue this past February, I met with the Tree of Life congregation leadership and several family members of those murdered. I was profoundly moved, both by the unimaginable pain of what I saw, but also the beautiful conversations we had. Together, we discussed what can be done to help the community heal from the trauma, and we discussed their vision for transforming the site into a center to educate against anti-Semitism and hate, a vision I support. The attack on the three Pittsburgh Jewish congregations is part of a larger pattern of hate-fueled violence that plagues our nation. The black community is all too familiar with the rising tide of white supremacy in our country. The federal government has the responsibility to act. We all have the responsibility to use our platforms and condemn the rhetoric and dismantle the systems of white supremacy that enables this and other kinds of violence against our communities. We must strengthen our gun laws to make such weapons of war never enter the hands of someone capable of such violence. We must invest in resources to identify and dismantle extremist networks. We must work hand in hand with communities engaging in dialogue and support to address the root causes of hatred and prevent future acts of violence. If we don't, these things will only get worse. It is for this reason I would like to make a commitment, a commitment made by Reverend Eric Manning, senior pastor at Mother Emanuel Church AME, when he visited Pittsburgh. Mother Emanuel was the site of a 2015 shooting where a self-avowed white supremacist entered the, Char the Charleston, South Carolina church during a Bible study and killed nine black congregants. When Reverend Manning spoke at the funeral of Rose Malinger, the last of the 11 victims to be laid to rest, he said, you are not alone. We mourn with you. We're here for you and that will never change. I commit myself to building bridges between marginalized communities and fighting back. I want our Jewish siblings to know that we are in this fight together every day for as long as it takes. I wanted to end with an excerpt from the Jewish prayer for peace that Rose Malinger led every Saturday service. May it be your will that you erase war and bloodshed from the world. And in its place, draw down a great and glorious peace so that nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Let justice come in waves like water and righteousness flow like river. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Holy One 
as the waters cover the sea. So may it be. And we say, amen. Thank you. I yield back. The gentlelady yields back.